Morning, guys. I'm going to give you a quick look through today our first production Ram 2500 Super Tourer um, that's come out of our, our Super Tourer production line. Now, about a year ago, I bought a Ram 2500, a black Ram 2500, and we featured that in Patriot Games. We took it away um, on its big trip up into Arnhem Land. And to be honest with you, we probably went a little bit over the top with that build. 37-inch uh, tyres, 4 inches of lift, uh, and I really wanted to see how far we could push the Ram platform. Now, like everything that, that we've done in the past, uh, it starts off the first build is always something that, that I build for myself, um, and then we refine it back and, and start pulling it back and create a product um, for our customers. Now, the Ram uh, platform is not something that I was really brand new to. Actually, I bought a Ram 3500 Julie over in the United States uh, about six months prior to that. Now, obviously, you've got the platforms that are really popular in Australia, and we build them all day, every day here. I'm going to start off by saying this video that I'm about to do, I'm going to tell you everything that I like about the Ram 2500. It is by no means a video to say uh, that there's no place for Chop 200 series or extended 79 series because those two platforms are always going to have their place in the touring scene here in Australia. But I just wanted everybody to really take note of uh, the new kid on the block, I suppose, and what this thing is actually capable of because when you start getting into it, um, it's, it's something that you can't not consider. You really need to have a look at the 2500 platform. And I'll, I'll run you through some of the downsides to it as well. Um, I'll start off with uh, GVM sort of stuff before we get into the car. Now, the main reason that you go with a Ram truck um, over any of the other platforms is its towing capacity. This thing here, out of the box, on a pintle hitch, you can put 6.7 tonne on the hitch of this thing straight out of the factory on a car licence. You can go 4.5 tonne on a 70mm ball and 3.5 tonne on a 50mm ball. Now, if you compare that to any Land Cruiser platform, you've got 3.5 tonnes. Even if you go with the towing upgrade, as far as I'm aware right now on the market with a 79 series or a 200 series, the highest towing uh, that you can get is four and a half ton. But it's not all about the towing capacity, I suppose. This platform, this truck was designed to haul 6.7 ton. That's what it comes out of the factory to do. There's no diff reinforcing, there's no auto upgrades, there's no clutch upgrades needed, there's no gearing upgrades needed. And if you're towing around that sort of capacity, even a fully loaded three and a half ton caravan, the 279s just weren't designed to do that. They weren't designed out of the factory. And I know from experience, when you start loading those cars up, um, they do start failing, you know what I mean? And look, it might be little things that you're happy to deal with, but that's a big consideration uh, to make. Now with my Julie in the United States, exactly the same drive line that you get here in Australia in the 2500, uh, we were pulling around nine tonne uh, on the back of that truck. I think we were weighing in somewhere around 16 or 17 tonne rolling down the highway. So I know with that experience that this uh, vehicle is capable of, of hauling that. You've got 1,080, 1,084 newton metres of torque out of the box. So to give you some sort of comparison, uh, 200 series makes about 600 newton metres, 650 I think it is. 79 series makes between four and 450 newton meters so the power delivery in this thing uh, towing absolutely anything um, is just unbelievable the chassis rails in this thing are huge comp uh, compared to a Toyota um, the diff housing uh, the gear set is just it's everything is massive this thing is a truck it's designed um, it's designed to tow it's designed to haul um, you know Ram trucks have got this saying eats utes for breakfast it's not these things are not a ute <laughs> they are a truck uh, now, before I run you through, I'm going to nip a couple of myths straight in the bud, straight away. The biggest issue I think that everybody has was going into something brand new or a new platform is what do I do about warranty? What do I do about spare parts? I actually counted through the website last night. There are 39 Ram dealers now in Australia, 39. If you have a look at that heat map all up the east coast, right up north, up in Darwin, uh, down in Perth and all the way around uh, the coast of Australia. So. Getting hold of spare parts, getting hold of warranty, having uh, that, I suppose, that infrastructure uh, in place behind the vehicle to make sure that if something was to go wrong, you can get it repaired. Still nowhere near as much as a Toyota dealership, but you'll get yourself out of trouble uh, anywhere you needed to go. It's worth noting as well that uh, ASV, Ram Trucks Australia, um, they, they look at themselves as a remanufacturer, not, not uh, a modifier. 
These are not a low volume import. They're bringing them into Australia uh, through RAM in the United States. They're actually doing the remanufacture at the old Walkinshaw uh, factory down in Melbourne. So that gives you a little bit of, uh, I suppose, confidence behind the technology, the manufacturing, the engineering um, that they're putting into this to do the full conversion from left hand to right hand drive. And I'm seeing more and more of these trucks on the road. One of these, the standard Laramie 2500, comes in roughly the same price as a 200 series Sahara uh, once you do a conversion, whoever you do your conversion through. So you're comparative straight away. The biggest thing is no chop, no extension, full warranty. With the 200 series, you go and chop it, um, then you lose your, your factory warranty. But obviously if you're using one of the credible um, conversion guys, that's, that's normally not a drama and we've never had a problem um, with one of our conversions ever in the past, never had one back for warranty. Uh, I think we'll start in the interior, so let's jump in there and I'll give you a better look at the interior and then I'll run you through the body and, and what we've done on this one. All right, jumping into the interior uh, of the 2500. Now, like I said before, uh, Ram Trucks Australia are only bringing in uh, the Laramie uh, variant, which is the top of the range. So the Laramie comes with absolutely everything. Um, the first thing that you'll notice when you jump into a Ram is the size of the cab. Now, it's worth noting too, the Ram and the 200 series Land Cruiser are pretty much identical in width, almost exactly the same. Length, you'd be surprised as well. These things look a lot bigger than they actually um, are dimensionally. This is only 200 millimetres longer, that much longer than a Chop 200 series with the 650 mil extension. I think it's because of the height of the bonnet that the truck looks a lot bigger than it is, but the one place that you really notice the size of this car is the interior. The interior in this thing is absolutely massive. Now, if you're touring uh, with kids, uh, like I do, you've got three young kids um, that you want to put in the back seat, this is like a sofa at, at home, and I'll, I'll show you through the back seat in a minute. But you've got, without going into too much detail, you've got everything that you would expect in here from the top of uh, a top-of-the-range vehicle. The stereo in this thing absolutely pumps the subwoofer uh, underneath uh, the back seat. You've got the Uconnect system, so the navigation, uh, voice activated, which all works with Australian maps, climate control, you've got heated seats, you've got air conditioned seats. Here's a feature in here that I'm sure a lot of people are gonna love. They're actually, there's some change in there, but they're actually a six seater. So you can fold this up, uh, you can put someone here in the middle, which uh, you'll notice in the black ram in the build video, I had three up in the front. You can put six really uh, decent sized blokes in this truck if you wanted to, I'm not saying you do that touring wise. Steering wheel controls, all your leather, you've got a 240 volt inverter up the front as standard. These things here have a, a tow mode in them, again with the, you know, the Cummins diesel um, and the box, they've got a tow mode in there. And what that tow mode does is it'll lock up the converter a lot quicker and it changes the shift pattern to keep you in that torque band using that, you know, 1,000, 1,100 newton metres of torque when you're towing. Um, they've also got an engine brake. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on the technicalities of that, but I know the engine brake in this thing actually runs through the turbo, something to do with the variable vanes in the turbo. So you're using uh, your engine as a compressor and slowing down the whole drivetrain um, when you come off the brakes. If I'm towing, say, an X1 or something light behind here um, and I'm in tow mode and I've got the engine braking on, you, you literally don't even have to touch the brakes. Um, the other cool thing with tow mode is you know, when you're cruising down the highway or pulling up to your mate's place, you come past, get off the throttle and you get out the back of the exhaust and, I don't know, you just kind of feel cool, to be honest with you. Um, you've got a heated steering wheel up here in Queensland. I don't think we're going to use that very often, but for the guys down south, um, that's a pretty good feature. You've obviously got parking sensors. They come standard with a brake controller as well, with a factory brake controller. We did run it for a little bit. Um, we're used to the, the, the Tow Pro by Red Arc. So we've actually bypassed that and we've put a tow pro in this truck and we'll be doing that in every one um, as standard. Up the top here, um, you've got push button switches for all of your accessories. Uh, on this vehicle as well, it's worth noting, we fitted front and rear lockers um, to this truck too. So your locker switches are up here, air compressors fitted uh, and all of your lights. This customer here has got three spares, so there's eight channels there if you want to put on uh, any other accessories, you can. That's something standard that we put in the Supertura uh, build. Probably worth noting too, sunroof, um, which even under the Rhino Pioneer platform is really handy. We use that a lot um, when you're just venting air out the top. But if you don't go with the canopy at the back, the other really cool feature, and this is, I think this is pretty American, you know, you can picture, you know, the, the farmer kind of cruising around with the dogs in the back. 
You've got a window that opens up at the back there, so you've got access um, if you've got pets up there in the back. We could probably at some stage, or you get someone to, to custom fabricate for you a dog box on the back and, uh, and put a grate in there so you can see your pet um, uh, in the back there, which I think is a feature that probably a lot of people would use. Let's have a quick look at the back seat and then we'll go for a walk around the exterior. All right, uh, standard fitting that we're putting on all of the Ram 2500s is Amp Research Power Side Steps, give you that nice clean look. I'll get in here, that's in my normal sort of driving position, which this seat, you can see how far it is back. And look at the room that you got in the back seat um, of this truck. It's just absolutely awesome if you're touring, you know, three up, four up, five up, or even six up if you wanted to put yourself through that sort of torture, I suppose. Um, uh, center console rest. Here's your little window in the back that I was just talking about before. But the other thing that I find really, really handy, and uh, you'll see Maddie the way that Maddie was cruising around um, up in Arnhem Land, is when you fold up these seats and you simply just push them up, you've got a flat floor. So you fold that forward. The other seat does exactly the same thing, um, and you've got a completely flat deck in the back here. You can mount fridges up in here uh, or any type of gear. I remember in my old 200 series, my silver one, I created a false floor. I ripped out the back seats, created a false floor from when I was touring. The interior um, of the Ram 2500, I don't know of another touring vehicle on the market currently that, that I've had experience with. Um, that really matches the interior of, of, of this truck. This thing is absolutely awesome. Let's have a look around the outside. All right, exterior. I'll try and fly through this as quick as I can. Now, this one's got a few options. I'll point out what's standard uh, on a P-Core Super Tourer and what's actually an option. Uh, Super Tourer comes with the TJM bar. Uh, we've been working with TJM uh, on bringing this bar in from the United States. We've had to go with the GCM of uh, this truck, which is about 13 and a half tonne. Um, I'll go into that a little bit more. We've had to go with a, a bigger winch that, that we could get. Uh, the TJM Torques are only rated up to 12,000 pounds. We've gone with Warn uh, in the front of this, so it's a 16,500 pound Warn winch. Uh, that comes standard. Uh, Power Wagon Grill comes standard on all of our Super Tourers. The difference with this one um, compared to all the standard Super Tourers that we're going to be building, Generally speaking, we're going to go with a sports appearance pack, so you're going to get black badges and black headlights. Uh, we couldn't actually get hold of one um, in time for the build on this one. So I worked with this uh, particular customer and we've gone with a, a standard 2500 Ram and added some of the power wagon stuff. So you'll see we've kind of tied in the chrome headlights with the chrome badges and a little bit of chrome, which we generally don't do. Um, and this is this has turned out absolutely Beautiful. The uh, bonnet decals, the side super tourer decals, obviously all standard. Black grille. This one here's got the front uh, headlight kit, so you've got 300mm uh, shoulder quad optics from X ray, and then you've got a 900 at the front, so plenty of light. There's also a 1200 up on the roof. Uh, all of the roof racks are optional uh, accessory, I'll run through that in a second. All right, coming around to the side of the truck, uh, probably the first thing you note is the Pecor fender flares. So we've gone with our own uh, flares that we're making in-house here uh, to give us that 50 mil wider track that you can legally go here in Australia, 25 mil aside. 18 inch method wheels, which looked apart on the 2500. It's um, one of the very few companies that are making um, the, the stud pattern or supplying the stud pattern here into Australia. Of course, Mickey Thompson tires in the 35 inch. So they're just under a 35 inch, uh, 305, 70, 18, which is legal on the Ram. We can go a 25 mil increase. Um, I'll quickly talk about the suspension. Um, we've gone with a two inch lift on this. So we've retained on the, the factory Super Tourers standard uh, radius arms and your standard sort of suspension geometry with a two inch lift, which is more than enough uh, clearance. Again, I'll go into GVMs uh, a little bit later on. AEV snorkel, um, we've gone with the Ram uh, sort of style mount. The, the standard AEVs come with that, that round mount on top, which personally I don't like. Um, like I said, the chrome badges, but we paint out all the door handles and, and colour match um, all of that side. So if we continue down here, uh, I'll touch on the, the, the roof racks, the Rhino Pioneer platform, which is the only product that we use is, is Rhino racks when it comes to roof racks here. Been using them forever and today, and they're just they're, they're an awesome bit of kit. Um, you can put, you can bolt onto a Pioneer platform, whatever you like. I've said it in other videos. The best thing I love about them is the amount of accessories that are available. The new backbone system uh, for the 2500 uh, is on there as well. That looks the part. We've got a 150 watt Red Arc solar panel. Again, everything on that roof rack is optional. Uh, it's on our standard prices, but this is what the customer 
um, specifically wanted on their build. And we've got a matching Rhino platform on the back. So let's continue down the back and I'll run you around uh, the PCOR tray system and canopy. The biggest change that obviously that we do uh, to the 2500 Ram is fit the whole PCOR system at the back. Now on a standard Super Tourer, um, you get an aluminium PCOR uh, tray with a headboard and drop down sides. We also have the option for our Super Tourer customers uh, for a canopy, which I'll give you a quick run through inside that at the moment. The Ram uh, tray is a little bit different than the rest of the trays that we produce, the 200 series and 79 series. Because of the big gap between uh, your rear diff and the cab, you get a massive um, toolbox in the front. So this toolbox here, uh, you can house whatever sort of gear that you like. You've got a shore flow pump under there. The whole bed system, the whole canopy system, everything is 100% aluminium. So the bed on its own comes in about 230 uh, kilos. Now, we're working with our customers a lot on GVMs, which again, I know I keep saying it, but I'll go into it at the, at the end of the vehicle. The big advantage of going aluminium is obvious reason, uh, GVM, higher payload, and your GCM as well. So when you're towing, that all comes into um, consideration. Now you've got central locking on every one of the toolboxes. So when you push the button, obviously, to lock the car, the whole canopy, all the toolboxes, rear drawer, everything locks with it. And that came, again, from years of experience of every time we had to lock our canopies, we had to go around and lock, you know, six or seven different locks. Rear toolbox is a little bit smaller. Uh, this one's housing the compressor in the back and a little bit uh, more space uh, to shelve in whatever you like. But if you come around this side, downside and upside really of that, that big towing capacity is the actual physical size of the tow bar. Now obviously, engineering purposes, we can't modify the tow bars. One of the things I will say that I don't like about uh, the, the tow bars on this is just how low they are. As far as your departure angle goes, you're never gonna, with a factory tow bar on, you're never gonna touch anything on, on the tray. So I suppose that's an upside. If you were doing some hardcore sort of uh, off-roading, which look, I'll go into again, this, that's not what these things are all about. Um, you're gonna you're gonna bottom out on your tow bar before you bottom out or, or hit anything on the tray. Uh, you got a water tap at the back there. We got a 80 litre water tank underneath that built into uh, the tray, and that's a, a poly tank. Um, let's get into the canopy, and then we'll do a walk around the back, and I'll show you a bit more around the other side. Okay, peak or canopy. Um, now this is a product that's been developed over years and years and years of uh, off-road touring. Everything that we learn when we go out, what works, what doesn't work, systems, how they all uh, come together, which I suppose is what our, our customers are really uh, investing into us for. When you buy a Peak or Super Tura, you get a product that uh, you don't have to go through that whole process of figuring out or learning what products work with what, what do I need, what don't I need. But we only offer this canopy uh, at the moment in this configuration that I'm gonna show you right now. This only has one option, which is the kitchen. Everything else is what works. We know it works. We know this whole system works together and this is what we supply. Again, all aluminium um, construction. You've got central locking on the doors. You've got all the lighting throughout uh, where you need it. You've got a massive storage space. Um, in this side, it's worth noting this canopy is two meters wide. Um, we do two different variants, one at 1.85 to suit your, your smaller trucks, your 79s or Rangers, um, and a two meter wide to suit the Ram truck or the 200 series. So camp chairs, bulk sort of items in here. Um, you've got a circuit breaker, obviously your mains power inlet for your BMS. Big rollout drawer in here um, to store whatever type of gear you like. Uh, but I suppose the, the best system, and I'll switch sides with you, the best part of it is the battery management system. Now all red out gear, everything uh, wired, everything labelled. There's two locations in a Peak or Super Tourer that you're going to find a relay or a circuit breaker and that is it, nowhere else. You're not going to find them behind seats or under guards. Um, and we did all that in the early days and, and we learnt the hard way. You know, you be on a trip, something fails, you can't find a fuse, you can't find a relay, you can't trace wires, um, and it, it, it can ruin your trip. So under the engine bay, um, there's one location there for all your fuses and your relays and your, your midi fuses as well. Then everything that's powering the canopy is here. This, this, this is it. You've got all your circuit uh, breakers in here, Red Arc BMS. Uh, battery management system, so that's controlling your solar input um, into the uh, into the canopy and uh, your mains. This has got lithium battery in it as well. This has got 160 amp hour uh, revolution lithium battery. So the power that this thing has is awesome. 2,000 watt inverter, 
USB sockets, cigarette sockets, uh, all your switching here for all of your lights, um, your switch here, main switch for your fridge on the other side, your water pump, and then you've got a secondary uh, solar input. So again, if you're camped in a shaded area, your solar panel, your fixed solar panel's not working, you can run out a, uh, a solar blanket. So that's a little bit of a look through. Uh, you've got some tie down points here as well. Um, and it's, it's a really, really well designed uh, bit of kit and it, it works really well. Let's go around to the back of the truck and I'll, um, I'll show you what's happening down the back end. We've got a fair bit going on uh, at the back of the truck and I'll quickly run you through that. Uh, probably the first thing to note out, airbags in the rear coils. Uh, we've gone with a manual fill on this one. There is an option available for an automatic uh, fill, which is switches inside the dash. Uh, massive pull-out rear drawer. Uh, your water tank fits behind there. Again, central locking on the rear drawer uh, as well. Massive runners, massive slides. Um, everything's built, obviously, to how you'd expect it. Once again, uh, the bed's all aluminium, canopy's all aluminium. Uh, two spare wheels at the back, we've got two 35s. We like to keep the spare wheels inside the proximity of the tray, really, for two reasons. There's a lot of weight there. It puts excess stress uh, onto the sheet metal, onto the canopy. Um, but realistically as well, when you've got two spares hanging over the back of the tray, generally speaking, it'll interfere with whatever you're towing, your caravan or your boat or, or anything like that. So we'd like to keep them up on the deck. Uh, tow bar already run through. This is the Pintle system um, that I was talking about before. So that's your 6.7 tonne sort of towing system. I don't know a lot of people that tow that sort of capacity, but if you do want to tow 6.7 tonne, um, you can do it. Uh, we've got obviously the winch cradle in the back as well. So this is another PCOR product. Uh, again, matching uh, the winch up the front, uh, being the worn, we've gone with the 12,000 uh, pound worn in the rear of this one as well. So that kind of sums up um, the rear. Let's go to the other side of the canopy and um, we'll start wrapping this video up, I think. Passenger side um, of the canopy, uh, you've got the same uh, central locking doors. Worthwhile noting as well, all of the lights are on plunger switches, so if you leave the mains on, open the door, light goes on, same as inside your car, close the door, light comes off. First thing I run you through is an 80 litre stand up fridge. Now you wouldn't think that you'd fit as much gear in these as you would a normal chest sort of style fridge, but what you find with the upright fridge is you're not packing stuff on top of stuff and it's, it's amazing how much gear you can actually fit inside them. You've also got a, a freezer uh, up in the top, so again this is standard fitting in a pink or canopy. You've got a water level gauge in here as well, uh, so you know what your water tank's running out, and you've got some 12 volt points on this side. So if you want, want to run out any lights or anything out of here, you can. Everything I've just run you through there, that's all your standard fitting in the PCOR three quarter canopy. And we call it a three quarter because it runs three quarters of the length of the bed for the reason of the spare wheels, like I was just saying before. The only other option that we've got is the PCOR drop down kitchen. Now we developed this about two years ago. Uh, at the time, there was absolutely nothing like this on the market, and again, it came out of necessity. Um, so we drop this down on the slide here, and then in the front, if I'm not going to hit the wall, it does come out a fair way. And then you've got another, another pull-out here. Sink, that's just a pop-down sink. Um, you've got a twin burner stove here, and then up in the top here, uh, you've got a pantry. Uh, there's a little leg that, that sits out underneath there, but this is a really handy bit of gear. Um, for your quick road stop sort of meals. Me personally, I wouldn't run one. Always have a camper trailer on the back, obviously, with a full kitchen, so I don't need one. But a lot of customers, um, a lot of customers really love this, and this is becoming a really popular option um, in all of our super tours. Now, I suppose we'll go around to the front of the vehicle. We'll walk up this side. I'll run you through a couple more things, and then we'll finish it off. Actually, before I do, one thing to note, uh, with the 2500 RAM, uh, DEF or AdBlue is something that not a lot of people are probably used to. It's more reserved for your bigger trucks. But your AdBlue is for your uh, emissions control. So what it does is it's, it's a fluid that breaks down the diesel uh, fumes for Australian or even worldwide emissions. Make sure you don't run out of AdBlue because the car goes into limp mode. So always carry spare AdBlue with you, but you can get it at any service station. If you're running in tow mode, uh, you're going to chew a lot more than that. But we kind of found um, that we were using one tank of AdBlue to about every four tanks of fuel. Also worthwhile noting, I almost forgot, um, this one's got a, an extra 120 litre uh, Brown Davis auxiliary uh, fuel tank in this with a manual uh, switch in the front. So we can carry another 120 litres of diesel. Probably worthwhile talking about fuel consumption on that note as well. When we were recently up in Arnhem Land, uh, my brother Bobby was driving a standard 200 series. I shouldn't say standard, it's modified, but it's a, not a chopped 200 series. With a tinny on the roof and an X1, 
Matty was uh, driving the Super Ram with about three and a half tonnes on the back, seven metre trailer and two buggies, and they were chewing equal amount of fuel. So they were both doing about 20 litres per 100 and there was a little bit of a competition going on and they started getting off the gas anywhere between sort of 19 and 22 litres per 100. So from a standard 200 series towing a one tonne trailer to the Super Rim with four inches of lift, 37s, towing, let's call it a three tonne trailer, the fuel consumption was almost exactly the same and we were, we were all blown away, absolutely blown away. And I'll just touch on the Super Peg awning on the side, so that's just 180 degree flip around awning and we've got lights all the way around the peak or tray as well. That's probably about it for this side of the truck. Guys, there's a run through the new Ram 2500 Super Tourer uh, by Pecor and what you can get now is a brand new platform um, on the Australian market. I'll run you through just a couple of downsides and then maybe a couple of upsides just to finish it up. Downside of owning a 2500 Ram is the GVM laws here in Australia. Because this car comes into the curb weight out of the factory of three and a half tonnes, and the maximum that you can drive in Australia on a car licence is 4.5 tonnes, you don't have a lot of payload to play with. The actual payload is very similar uh, to a 79 series dual cab uh, out of the factory, and even a CHOP 200 series out of the factory. What stops you is going over the four and a half tonne uh, GVM, which is the total weight of your vehicle. So if you want to load them up uh, like this with canopy and twin spares and all the rest of it, you have to get a GVM up upgrade. This one's sitting at 5.3 tonne GVM, which means that you need a, at least a medium rigid license or something over that. I have a heavy combination, I can drive road trains. So that's probably the only downside. There is another option though. You can go uh, from Ram Trucks Australia, you can go with 3500 Ram, uh, which has the leaf springs in the back and has a heavier GVM. But we obviously like the cooler springs. Now we've put a lot of testing into this, uh, into this platform. Uh, we took the, the black, the Super Ram up into Arnhem Land um, and we gave it a hiding up in Arnhem Land. Then I took it out uh, into Fink. Uh, I drove it down the Fink track. We went all the way down to Fink. Um, that's one of the nastiest uh, roads I think that you can drive in Australia, the actual racetrack from Fink. Uh, we had a ball with it. And once again, uh, Colorado, you know, Patriot Games filming up in Colorado, climbing to a 13, thousand foot summit you know with one of these cars on the tightest switchbacks that were you know those switchbacks are designed for smaller vehicles back in the day when they cut all those tracks in but that's mainly reserved now even for jeeps and we got we got miss parker and her you know big fat backside up that track and it was just they're just an amazing platform now i'm going to finish by saying this is not a rag on land cruisers at all by any stretch of the imagination my 79 series, my black truck, is still my favourite car that I've ever owned. My wife drives a 200 Land Cruiser. Uh, I just wanted to let everybody know about the new platform that exists, the 2500 Ram guys. If you're in the market for a touring truck, or more specifically a super tourer, this is our latest product and definitely one you should check out.